and welcome back everybody to part two of our airline sim series today we're going to be founding an airline and before we actually found it i'm going to show you a very useful tool now that's called as route map and first off i want to say shout out to math um he is on the forums great guy super nice he did this all himself he is not uh directly affiliated with airline sim so if y'all use this I, I suggest, guys, just donate. Throw him a few dollars. He pays for a lot of this um, out of pocket. And honestly, this is the best tool there is. This is a great tool. I love it. And yeah, just, just throw him some a few dollars. You know, it, it's awesome. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit start. Now we're going to select our world, Teggle. And... Let's see, airport size 10 and minimum free slots. We'll do 80. Now, it's going to be very, it's pretty much going to be everywhere here. Um, yeah, this is pretty much every large airport in the world. And so something I probably should have hit on last time are two important things to, you need to know. Airport size and airport slots. And airport size is uh, on a scale from 1 to 10. 1 being smallest, 10 being the biggest. So JFK, Atlanta, Chicago, Dallas, Houston, London, Tokyo, Haneda, a lot of very big airports. Now, the other thing are slots. So you can see how some of these are red, but over here, this one's not as red, which means it's probably a little lower on the slot list from what I... Uh, that's what I think the uh, greenish red means. So we are looking at founding Asiana, but unfortunately it's in Seoul, which is a nine bar airport. It kind of sucks, but not the end of the world. So we're gonna click this and it's gonna open up a root map. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna tell us this, wave planning. Now, we'll talk about waves in the next, in maybe one or two videos. Um, so don't don't worry about that now. But what we're just kind of looking at is wave interval. Every six hours is a good wave. And what that tells us is, this pretty much shows us within six hours of uh, round trip flight time where we can fly to. So that's three, enough time for... Um, Three there, three back. And we can hit a lot of places. So Seoul's a good airport. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here and I'm gonna I, I copied and pasted this because I'm sometimes bad at typing. We're gonna found Asiana Holdings with A H A S H. That's our code. Oh, it's already taken. Um A S N. There we go. And we're founding it with no parent company, so it's a holding, and our headquarters is going to be in ICN. And we can see transfers possible, which just means simply you um, passengers can go from one flight to another. Not uh, airports smaller than four bar, I'm correct, don't allow transfers, which means you can't turn them into hubs. But um, slots are at 96%, which means... 96% uh, of takeoff and landing slots are open, and passenger demand is 9 out of 10 bars. Good airport. Country of headquarters is South Korea. Traffic rights are regular unrestricted, which means we can fly from anywhere to anywhere and into South Korea. It's good to know. So we're going to have found, and then we have 75 million. Now, this is because I'm on a private server. Um, any regular server you join it's going to be 10 million. So that's something to keep in mind. 10 million is still a lot. You can do a lot with that. But it's kind of, it's, it's going to have to be a little smarter with some of your decisions. So the first thing I do before founding the actual Asian Airlines is, um, also, you will not be seeing this. This is an add-on I have. Uh, it's a free add-on. I'll link to it. It's Airline Sim Enhanced Suite Studio. A, nut, a guy made this. Super cool. I got some useful stuff. But what we want to do is we want to go to game settings. Now, I'm going to disable all of this. 
So it's automatically picked maintenance, create default service, assign default. This is just, this is a lot of stuff that's going to cost you money off the bat. And especially um, assign seating configuration, it's not good because it's going to assign you seats that are absolute garbage that you probably don't use. And create standardized seating, no. Automatically assign crew to new aircraft, no. And I'll explain why in another video. Ultimately, it's all to save money. So what we're going to do is you're going to go down here and you go create new enterprise with the parent company, Asiana. And our name is going to be Asiana Airlines with a, co a code of OS. If I should be what Asiana is. Let me double check quickly. Um, I'm pretty sure it's... OS. A good reference is Wikipedia. Just click on quickly go there. And what the heck? Oh, because I looked at Asian Asian Airlines. Asiana, there we go. Which is the code O Z, that's what it is. Oscar Zulu and one other thing I wanted to point out is on normal servers on non-private servers you can't use real airline names um, so you have to make some up um, for instance one previous airline I've had is uh, all Japan Airlines pretty close to all Nippon but it's different enough that it's okay to use and our starting capital is gonna be 75 million I don't want to leave really any money in Asiana Holdings. It's not worth it yet. So we're going to hit found. Now here we go. So we're founded in South Korea. We can go take a look at Seoul and Chon. And we have some competition. Korean Air is here with 503 departures. That's Now when you look at this, this is weekly. So Aeroflot has seven departures, which is means it has one daily flight. Um, 42 means seven daily flights. So let's go ahead and take a look. So we're going to click over here. Uh, you can click with your uh, mouse wheel and it'll, it should open it up in a new tab. So Busan to Seoul. We see lots of flights, including a couple. So we see three flights at the same time. Now that's on purpose. and I'll tell you why. This guy is doing a wave pattern which is the ideal way to have flights so to best explain a wave I'm going to show you one of my own airlines so we're gonna go over here to Newark and we're gonna hit slots now y'all see that okay so like there's not a single flight in Newark at 1300 but we can see slots oh well, one thing I want to do we need to go to game settings and I've got to do this. We want to use local time. Perfect. And then we're just going to go back to Newark. There we go. So we can see that the slots are being used more at 14 and 1600 and 800 and 600. Well, that's because if you come here and look at Newark, we have a minimum transfer time of an hour and 30 minutes. Well, what's that mean? That means that for a passenger to go from, say, a flight from London Heathrow to Newark and Newark to Chicago, there has to be an hour and a half between those flights for the passenger to be able to book that. Now, this is something I don't think I've ever found out, and I don't know if anybody really knows exactly, but I am always very cautious and I always do at least an hour and 31 minutes before I uh, start planning my waves. So if we come over here and look at this, what you can do is, well, 43%, okay, that's kind of helpful, but not really. Well, you click on it, and then it shows you a block. So slots are done via blocks of five minutes. Now, we can see that from 6.5 to 6, or 1600 to 1610, there's an all 100% which means every landing slot is used and you can see they're all used by my airline and now well okay so I can open up flights at 1615 I can open up one more flight at 1620 
and so on and so forth. Well, okay, so 0%, that means I can put flights here, but how do I know how many flights I can put in these slots before it's 100%? Well, what you do is you come back to the information page, and you see slots per 5 minutes, which is 16. Now, servers, this varies a lot. Now, the server I'm on, Teggle, has double slots, which means, and I think Newark normally has 8 slots per 5 minutes, and we have 16, which makes a huge difference. Okay, well that's good. Now, do landing slots and takeoff slots differ? No. Any slot can be used for anything. So, I can have an aircraft land here and say, okay, this flight isn't profitable. Okay, I can delete it and have it become an arrival slot. Well, how do I get a slot? Well, when you plan your flight, it's a first come, first serve. So you can't reserve slots, slots don't belong to anybody, and you can't, like, reserve them. If you're, You only get to keep it if you're using it. Well, okay, so can I fly any aircraft between point A and B? Yes and no. So let's go here and click on manufacturers. And I'm going to select the A220 because it's a good example. So let's come here and look at this. Well, okay. So we can see that if it, it can fly from a zero bar to zero bar, zero bar to 10 bar. Okay. Well, can it fly to seven bar to 10 bar? Yeah. It, so it can fly between any airports to, without having to worry about their size in terms of bars. Of course, you still have to factor in distance and, you know, runway. But let's go back here and let's take a look at the CRJ series. And let's take a look at the 200 and the 900. The 200, oh, well, it can't fly between 10 bars and 10 bars, and it can't, but it can fly between a 10 bar and a 5 bar. And it can fly between a 4 bar and any bar. So, okay. Well, that makes sense. But why? You know, in real life, RJs have flown. You know, I knew I know United occasionally would fly some between Chicago and Washington or Washington and Newark partially to, uh, you know, because the aircraft needed, you know, is a kind of a transfer between different points. Well, pretty much it used to be there's a thing called slot blocking. And what people would do is, you know, looking at Newark with it still has. 91% slots, so we have about 9,000 slots, or enough for 9,000 more departures, give or take, you know, that's assuming perfect schedules. Well, if I'm running an airline here, I don't want any competition, so I could buy up a lot of cheap planes, maybe some Beechcraft Barons or Cessnas or something, and I could just run, you know, a thousand flights a day between Washington and Newark or you know Newark and Boston and while they only carry four or five people per flight that's still you know five or six thousand people well okay but that kind of hurts everybody else because that doesn't really make sense when you could fly you know 10 or 20 daily flights with 37s and carry more people so it's all about keeping people from just grabbing up slots because at the end of the day, the I would I would argue the most valuable thing in this game is a slot. So let's take a look. So we kind of get an idea. So the ten to ten, is, it's the five bar. The five bar is the kind of the cutoff for when you can't start flying all the place you want. But let's look at the seven hundred. Well, you can fly ten bar to eight bar. Or sorry, this is 900 or 10 bar to A bar. So it all depends on the aircraft's size in terms of how many people it can carry. And these are some very important things to consider when looking at aircraft to buy and airports to start. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this quick little 15 minute video. And to, uh, the next video is going to be all about setting up or at uh, Pretty much, I think we're going to look at ordering aircraft, setting up package configuration, and so much more. So until then, have a good one, and bye.